So here, we're being asked to determine the slope from the line below. Uh, we can do this from a graph. And we would always want to start it from the left and work our way to the right. So from the good point here, we have to go up three, up one, two, three. And then we would have to go to the right and we use our little line here to help us map this out. And we would go to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So writing this out in form of a slope, the slope, remember, is equal to the change in the y direction, which is up and down, over the change in the x direction. In this case, the change in the y direction was three, the change in the x direction was seven. So we see another example of finding the slope from a graph. Now notice, up three to the right seven both numbers are positive so our slope is positive and if we look at this example too from left to right that line would be going uphill if we look at this example here from left to right that line is going downhill and that slope was negative so a negative slope we're going to learn produces a line that goes down from left to right and a positive slope produces a line that goes up from left to right here we need to determine the slope of a line that passes through each pair of points. Um, at this time, if the sub would pause the video and you guys can try these on your own and then they can continue the video once everybody's done and I'll show the solutions. So finding the slope here We can label these x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. You don't have to do that. That's just a matter of keeping yourself, helping organizing yourself. Slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Putting the numbers in, 1 take away 3, 1 take away 3. All over to take away a negative 5. That gives us negative 2 over 7, and that is the final answer. That is the final slope because it cannot be reduced. So that line will be going down from left to right. Calculating the slope here, again, if it helps, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Putting the numbers into the slope formula. 8 take away 8. Four take away seven. Eight take away eight is zero. Four take away seven is negative three. And the actual slope of this line is zero. We're gonna learn more about that in the days to come. Now this example five is a little bit different. We do need to use the whole slope formula again. Uh, we're on our fifth example and we're coming back to the slope formula again. It's best that you learn it that the slope is equal to y sub two minus y sub one all divided by x sub two minus x sub one. And the difference between what we've done so far in this example comes right here. We are given two points, but we do not know the value of that right there. And my highlighter is not working. We do not know the value of that R. That's what we're actually solving for here. We're not being asked to find the slope. We're being asked to find the value of one of the X coordinates. So what we do here is we're going to want to identify this as x sub 1, this would be y sub 1, this is x sub 2, this is y sub 2, and this right here, it tells us, has a slope of, this right here is the m. We're actually going to be putting in negative 3 halves in for the m. So when I put these values in, this is what the equation is going to look like. Negative 3 halves is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 would be negative 3 take away 6 
and x sub 2 minus x sub 1 is going to be 10 take away r. Now we have a proportion to solve that we learned how to solve back in chapter 4. And if you had forgot, let me show you how to do that right now. The first thing we're going to need to do is simplify this numerator. Negative 3 take away 6. Well, that gives us a negative 9. All divided by 10 minus r. On the other side, we simply have the fraction negative 3 halves. Here we're going to use our cross products. We have to multiply this whole denominator, 10 minus r, times negative 3. Or negative 3 times 10 minus r. On the other side, we're going to do the other cross product, 2 times negative 9. And since they are proportional, or since they form a proportion, we can set them equal to one another. Now we have an equation we can solve. On the left hand side here in blue we have to distribute the 3, or actually the negative 3. Negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Negative 3 times minus r is actually plus 3r. And on the right hand side 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. Then we need to add 30 to both sides. giving us 3r is equal to 12. Then we divide each side by 3. And we find the value of r is 4. Taking a look at this problem in its entirety, it comes from the slope formula. Again, we use the slope formula, but notice we actually put a value in for the slope. And we identify all the parts of the equation up here from the problem. Let's take a look at the next example. Similar problem. Starting off with the slope formula again. The slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. As we did in the last example, we're told that the slope here, we are told the slope is in this case one fifth. That is our m. So we substitute the m with one fifth. And then we can identify our x sub 1 and our y sub 1. And our x sub 2 and our y sub 2 to help us along in substituting into this formula. y sub 2. Minus so y sub 1 is going to give us 5 minus 4. And in the denominator, r minus a negative 2. Now this one's actually pretty darn easy because when we simplify this numerator right here, 5 minus 4, it gives us 1. And since the numerator on the other side is 1, we have to figure out what r is going to be so that when we add it to 2 we get 5 and mentally we should be able to figure out that this r is equal to 3. You could have used cross products there but there really was no need. Our clothing, closing thought today, we've already learned how to find the slope back in chapter 5 specifically in lesson 5-6. We used it to write the equation of a line. Today we were asked to just find the slope of a line, a much easier task than we learned in Lesson 5-6. Um, we did that by writing as a ratio as the change of y values over the change in x values. Again, I stress to you the slope formula is m is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And another way to write that would be this the change in the y values over the change in the x values. Your assignment for today is a worksheet. I want you to complete the practice side for tomorrow and be ready to discuss it. It is uh, one of your grades this nine weeks, so let's get her done.